Welcome to something to wrestle with. Something to wrestle with. Bruce Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard. Well, you know. That's not the original. He's pretty fired up about it. Can you tell us who? How do you know he's fired up about it? Did he call you? Let me just read it. Okay. Okay. Can you tell us who the fuck wrote those epic WrestleMania and SummerSlam guitar themes? It wasn't Johnston. So the way he just threw the fuck in there, I felt like he's pretty fired up about it. I could be wrong. Which, which ones is he talking about? The old ones? That was Jim Johnston, man. He says it wasn't. Okay. Well, he's fucking wrong. You're, you're, then you're fucking wrong, pal. <laughs> Don't fuck off. <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you fucking are? Yes. I love you. Fucking Jim Johnson, you fuck. <laughs> uh, Tim says in a previous you love to know. Who the fuck? Fuck you. Motherfucker. That wasn't even a Jim Cornette one. No, no, that's a goddamn, that's a, that's a fucking Bruce Pritchard. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> a little peek behind the curtain. Uh, Jim Ross and I are doing our first live show together in Jacksonville, Florida. It's the day before the AEW show and Joe Janelle is one of our guests. And it's the same week the whole Enzo shit happens. So I thought this will be timely. So Joey sits down, he's telling the story and he launches into his Jim Cornette impression. It's pretty, I mean, he's got the, like the speech down. Perfectly, you know, outlaw mud show bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Outlaw well, mud show sling, goddamn independent flip flop flying motherfuckers. Well, at the end, when he finishes, just like what you did, I pull my mic down, just like I've done with you 3,000 times at a live show and say, motherfucker. And then he hit motherfucker on the mic and the crowd fucking died. And it was like, I kind of miss Bruce a little. Cause I used to <laughs> just give you little nudges in a live show and bam, it would hit. And, it was good times. Good times. Uh, Cody Daniels wants to know who would win in a shoot fight with Paul Lee and Jim Cornette and why? <laughs> oh my God. That, that would be what I like to call a pinch fight. I would just kind of see him. God damn. If I have a tennis racket, I'll kill him. If I only had a phone, sir, I will kill you. Uh, George wants to know, sorry, Bruce, but a question for Conrad. If you had a, a podcast with Heyman hustle, what topic would you want to do in long form with Paul? Uh, I'm going to tag you in on this one, Bruce. If you knew that Paul Heyman was going to do one episode, one podcast ever, what would be the topic you think would be most interesting? Hmm. You know what? You know what? Uh, and maybe it's not even Paul, but I would all go all the way back to the double cross of the NWA with Shane Douglas and creation of ECW. That's it. That's not a bad one. I'm in. Uh, uh, Adrian. No, sir. Don't give a damn. Fuck you, motherfucker. Fucking agree. My double cheeseburger, double cheese, extra onion, double mayo. Wipe my face off with a fucking towel, motherfucker. You know, you just Fuck mentioned Fuck you, it. motherfucker. I knew when I asked, when you heard that Shane Douglas threw down the NWA title, what did you think of that? I mean, part of you is a, grew up an NWA fan. You were very much a traditionalist, but you also understood the business had to advance. And I mean, clearly you understood that you went to work for Vince McMahon. what did you think when you heard that Heyman had double crossed the NWA? Which, you know, by and large was a dead organization in 94, but what did you think? Well, uh, at that point I looked at it only as an angle. The, the NWA was not the NWA that I grew up with. And it was upon hearing it, I thought it was just an angle, but it, at the same time, it was an angle using, a championship that meant less than nothing at that time, unfortunately. So, yeah, I just thought it was just another angle and didn't think that much of it. Unfortunately, the NWA of old, and I'm talking about in in the 70s and maybe early 80s, that is, you know, when you look at it, that and what they presented beyond 
1990 or whatever it was, just didn't matter. Didn't matter. The NWA ceased to exist to that point. 